Ugh, that doesn't look good. If you're anything like me, you see this chart and you immediately start regretting your choice in picking things like React. But also, if you're anything like me or you hang out a bunch, you might get suspicious pretty fast because Svelte should not be scoring that low on any performance showdown of any form. This chart was made by a very talented engineer, Matteo, who is one of the core creators of Fastify as well as a core contributor to Node. So he knows JavaScript performance well. This benchmark was meant to showcase how fast these different solutions can generate HTML pages that get sent to a user. Thankfully, it was almost entirely wrong. The details of why this happened are fascinating, and I'm actually quite excited to go through them all with you. But before we can do that, we have to first hear from our sponsor. This video is mostly about JS frameworks, but there's a lot of other things you might be writing your server-side code in. If you're a PHP person, you might be disappointed that the quality of the tools for deployment aren't as good as what we have in the JS world. That's not the case anymore. Savalo's got it figured out. I can figure it out even, and I'm not good at this stuff. Getting a PHP app deployed was literally one click, and we have all the niceties we'd expect from modern stuff. We have Cloudflare immediately baked in for you with DDoS protection enabled, as well as the ability to turn on CDN and edge caching, if that's something that you're interested in. And deploying was so easy. This is an example app. I literally one click deployed it, and it was up in minutes. If you want to deploy your own thing, you go to applications, you click the little add app button that my face is covering, you link a GitHub repo, and you're done. <laughs> it's actually that easy. They're not some random company either. They're backed and built by Kinsta, who's been around in the WordPress hosting world for a long time now. They know their stuff. This is just a way to deploy everything else. Basically anything that you can deploy in a Docker image, Savala has you covered for, including databases too. By the way, if you sign up right now, they give you a free $50 credit. Worth a look if I say so myself. Thank you, Savala, for sponsoring today's episode. Check them out at savala.com. Cool. So what happened here? The first thing we need to pay attention to is this SSR callout. This is how fast these different solutions are generating HTML pages that the user gets. All of these behave very differently, though, because Solid, Vue, Svelte, and React all have to also send JavaScript that can bind to the HTML, which means a lot of things. It means the HTML being sent is different. It means that there's JavaScript that has to be pulled in and do specific things. There's a lot of details there. But the more important parts are the things that were just wrong with the benchmark. When this originally happened, I called them out, and we're going to go through these one at a time. The first is Rich Harris, who quoted it with, unfortunately, this is wrong. The Svelte implementation is doing a lot more work than the others. It's not an apples to apples comparison. I fixed it and also added Svelte 5 to the mix for good measure. Turns out we're actually faster than Fastify. I want to find the pull request because it was actually quite funny. Align Svelte implementation with all the others. It's a one line change. He swapped from the tiles, which is what they were like rendering a bunch of, from creating a new array for every entity to just pushing them. And that was the only change necessary to go from near the bottom to near the top. His example was copying arrays for literally no reason. And he didn't write the example. It was just the example representing his framework and it was wrong. And when he audited it, he found this obvious failure and fixed it. Turns out a lot of the code was being written by AI as we'll get to momentarily. That was the mistake Rich caught. Ryan caught some things that I wouldn't quite call mistakes, but are still notable. I looked at the benchmark and I found inconsistencies in solid as well. We were the only ones doing a bunch of extra style bindings, so I removed them. But Fastify and HTML simple renders aren't equivalent since they don't need to account for hydration, so I turned it off. Again, hydration means that the JavaScript on the client can figure out which element is which, but if you don't have that, you can generate less HTML with less information and do it much faster. So when he turned off the hydration, he was able to get numbers that were very, very close to what they were seeing with Fastify. So Fastify was getting like 893 min and a 982 average. And without hydration, he was getting a 1305 min and a 1506 average. So again, despite being a client-side framework, he was able to render the correct HTML page faster than Fastify could. Pretty massive gap there too. It's almost a 2x difference. Nuts. But then we get to everyone's favorite, React. What went wrong with the React version? They were running it in dev mode. <laughs> so another one line change. Start node environment equals production, node server.js. And that immediately resulted in a massive performance win. It's a very common blunder. So Dan is always on the lookout to see if that is happening. I replied accordingly. And that's why I wrote my reply, breaking down all of the mistakes and also calling out these benchmarks were being written by LLMs. Pro tip, 
if you're writing benchmarks for technologies that are written by really smart people that are also quite accessible publicly and the scores don't look good, hit them up to make sure you did things right, especially when it's things like Svelte and Solid that should be really fast and you didn't put React in prod mode. <laughs> like, catchable mistakes. Thankfully, Mateo and the team took this seriously, deleted the post, deleted the tweet about it, and then followed up later on with what they consider the actual numbers. And we see here things are a hell of a lot closer. But let's break down this in detail. First, Mateo cites me, which is awesome. I appreciate that a ton. I put quite a bit of work into making sure I got all of the details of all of the mistakes that I knew of, at least. I didn't dig into the view one because I didn't see anybody talking about it, but I covered all the others. He also thanked everyone who gave advice and helped throughout this. Really cool that he did that. And also, uh, Jovi added a Preact version too for a comparison. Love that as well. So let's take a look at the updated results. We begin with the outlier, Fastify HTML. A Fastify plugin wrapping GHTML, delivering 1,088 requests per second. It was added as a baseline. It doesn't really compare well with all the others because it's just a wrapper for a simple HTML templating library with none of the features the other libraries have, specifically the ability to bind the JavaScript that is being written so that it can do things after the page loads. There is no concept of after the page loads with an HTML template generator. That concept comes from something like HTMX or a client-side framework. Due to its simple nature, we expected it to be the better performing library, and we wanted to see just how far behind the other fully featured libraries would be. Next, we have Vue, delivering 1,028 requests per second. Vue is probably the best deal if you want great SSR performance and want a truly comprehensive library ecosystem. Then we have Svelte 5, which was still a pre-release, which is delivering 968 per second. Solo is at 907. React's younger brother Preact was at 717. Then React 19's release candidate was last with 572 requests per second. As mentioned before, the Fastify HTML test was added as a baseline and to demonstrate what could be gained in performance by doing away with fully fledged front-end frameworks and sticking to minimal templating. Good old HTMX mindset. Well, let's read the actual post. That's cool. It, it's I know it's silly, but like having Platformic, which is a platform and crew crew that I've looked up to for like five plus years now, citing me as the first name other than Mateo on the page. That that's really cool. That means a lot. I, I know like I have the big numbers and people hitting me up and whatever, but these small things make me feel like I'm having actual impact being listed next to these fucking legends is surreal. It's so cool. And I love Mateo. Like to be clear, mistakes were made. These things happen. He is working hard, understood why this was going the way it was and took the time to do it right. And I will always appreciate someone for that. Server-side rendering is an often overlooked aspect when building high-performing web apps in Node. During my time consulting, many engagements centered around debugging Node performance issues. In these scenarios, the culprit's almost always SSR. SSR is a CPU-bound activity that can easily be the main cause of blocking Node event loop. It's crucial to consider this when choosing your front-end stack. We set out to find out the state of SSR performance across today's most popular libraries, especially those that can be cleanly integrated with Fastify. For this, we need to generate a non-trivial sample document that includes a large number of elements to have a very large page for the test and consequently have more running time to capture each library's performance. We asked an LLM to write some code to draw a spiral in a container using divs as 10 by 10 pixel tiles. Here is that code. Subsequently, we asked it to create versions using all the libraries that we intended to test. The implementations adapted to use each library's rendering engine rather than relying on the DOM method instead. This is what our sample looks like with all 2,398 divs. That's trippy. The Fastify Vite integration makes for a perfect testbed for investigating where SSR performance is at for various frameworks. We looked at React, Vue, Solids, Felt, and Preact. We also looked at Fastify HTML as a, he said, a like reference point. We chose not to consider tools like Next, Astro, and Quick, as well as other fully fresh frameworks since they don't offer an isolated rendering method. Again, they're just trying to test this using Fastify's Vite binding. They also use boilerplate as follows. Vite ready, server listen, all simple. They were all running as the production build after running Vite build. The only exceptions are Fastify HTML and the EJS tests because those don't actually require Vite. Let's check out the repo. I want to see if I can catch any potential holes in the React example, because that was slower than I would have expected. Client base. Okay, I can admit that's pretty simple. There is no like subcomponent rendering or complexity there. It's just creating all of these elements, creating all of the 
the tile states and then using that to render this. Nice and simple. I can appreciate that. So they made sure all the examples have the same characteristics. No client side reactivity features used at all. They all handle style bindings using template literals unless that was inappropriate for the framework, like for React and Solid. So again, if we look at the code here, it's just going to use class name tile because if it had to render the inline styles for all the details for all of them, that would just be a lot more work it has to do for no reason. So the only dynamic part being this with the style tag, that makes more sense. X and Y values are created with two fixed two, and there's no style tag other than the ones in the document shell. Also love that, like, remember, this is Mateo. He's doing very well. He's deep in the JavaScript world. He's still rocking a 2020 MacBook Air with eight gigs of RAM because it doesn't matter. Anyways, fastify HTML. We began with the outlier. These are the speeds they saw. Average of 1,088 requests per second, I'm assuming. Yeah, 1,088 requests per second. Fastify HTML was added to the template as a baseline. It doesn't really compare well with all the others because it's just a wrapper for an HTML thing. The boilerplate used can be seen below. Notice the create HTML function mimicking Fastify V, which is used to register a layout function that renders the document shell. All nice and simple. View was surprisingly fast, like 1,028 for a client-side framework being rendered on the server. That's nuts. They use render to string, which is really fast. Svelte hit 968 requests per second, which is still really, really nuts. They have their own templating language, just like Vue does. But through that, they were able to make really, really good performance. Solid is right behind. And to be clear, Solid's performance focus isn't server-side rendering, it's client-side experience, but they still managed to get some of the better server-side rendering performance. But if you want to see Solid at its best, look at a benchmark that shows client-side behaviors and updates. Solid will almost always win. It is really, really fast. Preact, again, minimal version of React, also performed really well for this. And again, it's the render to string, which is the key part. React has a render to string, but it's rough. It's not as fast as other solutions because they're focused more on rendering to pipes because then it can stream things down. A lot of React's focus has been how do we send things down chunk by chunk when they're ready rather than blocking everything on the whole page going down at once. Also of note, I didn't even know this, but uh, render to string, not only is it not recommended, it's actually deprecated now. And there's a whole separate proposal render to markup. It's a render helper for rendering HTML that's not intended to be hydrated. It's intended to support a subset of HTML that can be used as embedding and not served as HTML documents for HTTP. For example, as emails or an RSS or Atom feeds or other distributions. React email is going to have a really good time with this one. That's super cool. I'd be super curious how the benchmark performs if we swapped to this instead, but I'm not going to put the time into that. Be good to support the recommended approach since render to string is legacy. So we able to converse into readable instead of directly piping the node stream that React provides. I hope to use directly for perf instead of trying to wrap it in a readable. Fastify offers a reply that sends stream handler. It wraps the internal. We add a transformer pass through in between. We'd add additional overhead, which we did not want to add. Need to experiment a bit on how to do this without slowdown. Very interesting. As we see here, the complexity of these things is very real. And if we're just performing how quickly these generate HTML, it's not super useful. But in the end, when the difference is worse, 50%, whatever. And Fastify still flies. I actually got into drama earlier that I didn't make a video on, despite it being incredibly tempting, where I was showcasing the performance differences in something like Rails by default versus something like JS with Fastify. This was Bun with Fastify versus Rails by default. Rails was seeing 5,300 requests per second, and Bun was seeing almost 40,000. We were like, oh yeah, that's Bun. Here's the node version on Fastify, 36,000. Basically margin for error. Like the difference between those two was nothing. So as fast as Bun is, yeah, Fastify flies. That all said, React hitting 50% of the speed of a tool that is literally just generating static HTML when React is a giant framework capable of so many things. That is crazy. 
But it's also crazy that Vue with similar capabilities is able to be so close to Fastify where it's not measured by like fractional differences, it's measured by percentage differences. This is really interesting. My guess would have been that React would perform worse than it is. But I also would have guessed most of these would have performed worse too. So what I've learned from this is that server-side rendering performance doesn't really matter that much when it comes to how fast your client-side frameworks can just spit out the right HTML. They've all gotten to the point where they're pretty damn good. If we compare that to where we thought we were, <laughs> it's not that bad in the end. Let me know what you think, though. Should we give up on server-side rendering entirely, or should we go rewrite all our servers and go and rest? Let me know how you're feeling. Until next time, peace nerds.